get into the social economy, tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, what led you to this subject. Sure. Uh, so my name is Vonna Gonzalez. I'm an assistant professor with the Faculty of Justice and Social Inquiry. I'm also the current director of the Undergraduate Certificate in Economic Justice and a faculty affiliate of the New School of Transporter Studies. Um, so uh, let's see, before coming to Arizona, I lived in the San Francisco Bay Area where I was born and raised, and I also went to graduate school there. Mm -hmm. I got my PhD in political science at the University of California in Berkeley. And it's actually there where I started to gain a real interest in the social economy. So in graduate school, I, so I specialized in comparative politics uh, and public administration, uh, and I had a specialization in European politics and society. But for my dissertation, I uh, explored the development of the social economy in Southern Europe. Uh, more specifically, I undertook a couple of years of uh, field research examining the development of social cooperatives, uh, kind of a particularly innovative institution, and how it affected the Italian welfare reform. So since I've been at ASU, I've written a variety of articles and embarked in a number of projects that basically explore the way that governance impacts and is impacted by uh, institutional capacity within civil society and how that affects uh, policy formation, social and economic policy formation and implementation, social and cultural inclusion, and community development more broadly. So tell us a little bit about the social economy. This is a concept you don't hear very often. What does it mean? Yeah, so broadly speaking, the social economy exists at the, at the nexus of civil society, the state, and the economy. And it includes organizations like cooperatives, associations, and foundations, all of which would provide goods and services and information to the public with the aim of promoting not only economic productivity, uh, but social solidarity as well. So, but beyond the, the kinds of organizations uh, that are encompassed in the social economy, conceptually we can think about it as a sphere of practices and policies that combine innovation and entrepreneurship with uh, the goal of promoting sustainability, social inclusion, um, and ultimately I think uh, from there you can distinguish it uh, as a kind of uh, third way between uh, the ideological underpinnings of free market capitalism on the one hand and state-driven social engineering on the other. So by enabling individuals and entities to collaborate and catalyze their creative ideas to pro and productive capacity, the social economy generates economic development but does so in a way that elevates concerns about social justice, uh, economic justice, and environment to the forefront of development concerns. So it's important also, I should add, uh, that while there are a variety of practitioners, it's important to note that while there are a variety of practitioners and uh, academics that have spent the last decade really working on uh, this co concept of the social economy, both theor theoretically and empirically, in the United States it's really not as well known. Um, but I think that's slowly beginning to change. So we now have the Social uh, Economy Network in the U.S., which is part of a broader intercontinental network uh, to promote the social solidarity economy um, more broadly within the Americas. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, the ILO, the International Labor Organization, has an initiative that focuses on promoting examples of what they call people-centered economy, uh, economic organizations within U.N. member states. Um, and then more closer to home, the Obama administration's Domestic Policy Council now includes an Office of Social Innovation and Civic Participation. And that takes up some of the similar themes that are promoted um, within the social economy. And these include things like uh, broadening participation, shared responsibility, um, bottom-up solutions, and, and really trying to focus on results. If you could sum up the main principles that encapsulate this broader vision of the social economy, what would they be? Yeah, I think, I mean, different groups choose to emphasize different aspects, but more generally I would say that the social economy is about working against corporatization and plutocracy within markets, and doing that by harnessing community development for the main purpose of fostering positive social change. Um, and this is done by generating greater opportunities for civic engagement, for workplace democracy, mm -hmm. and for a better quality of life. And that includes dealing with uh, a variety of ecological challenges. Um, for one, climate changes, energy and water uh, shortages, things like loss of biodiversity come to mind. 
Um, so in thinking about the broader vision of the social economy, maybe the normative underpinnings of the social economy, I think I would probably highlight three main principles. And the first would be social innovation. So this is harnessing technological invention and productive processes um, for social projects, right? Then economic justice is about, uh, is the second main principle, I would say, which is about generating more equitable distribution of productive enterprises and ultimately more sustainable development. And then the last thing I think, last fundamental principle that I would highlight in talking about the social economy is collective welfare. And by this I mean promoting social inclusion and economic well-being through collaborative practices and ultimately by creating more cooperative governance structures. Excellent. Okay, so these principles seem pretty relevant for people like me that are interested in the social economy as it relates more broadly um, to issues of social transformation. But can you tell me how you see the social economy um, in relation to concepts that sound similar but are a little bit uh, distinct? And I'm thinking more on the lines of business and management, so social enterprise. Sure, that's a great question um, because I think the two are often used interchangeably, but I think there's definitely a distinction to be made. So social enterprises, as they tend to be understood in the United States and actually much of the Anglophone world, so places like in England, the UK and, and Australia, um, I think the social enterprises are usually identified as organizations seeking business solutions to social problems. And these can be either uh, for-profit or non-profit, depends on the particular definition, but they operate in a wide variety of sectors, so uh, from energy to education to social care to tourism. But most, because most of the literature emanates from people that are either directly or indirectly associated with business schools and management programs, uh, I think it's not surprising that you tend to see social enterprises uh, defined as kind of a merging of uh, commercialism or uh, commerce on the one hand and philanthropy on the other. And therefore, there's a lot of emphasis placed on earned income and uh, independence from government and ultimately efficiency concerns. Mm -hmm. So what distinguishes the definition of social enterprise from what we're promoting here, which is social economy, I think is the centrality of individual entrepreneurship and private revenue, as well as the emphasis on market mechanisms and by extension, government failures, as opposed to the social economy, which really tries to embed these organizations in a broader set of, of systems. So not only community systems, but political systems and uh, ecological systems. So that said, I think that uh, you know, in lots of places, particularly in Europe, you can see a broader definition of social enterprise, and this overlaps a lot with the social economy. So uh, the normative principles of the social economy, I should say. So one example that comes to mind is the ACOPTI project, which was launched about a decade ago, and it was heavily funded by the European Commission. Uh, and they really define social enterprises as public benefit organizations that through limited profit distribution and things like democratic collaboration and participation in management uh, provide innovative diverse and diverse services um, and supply processes with an explicit social purpose. So I think that kind of definition really overlaps nicely with, with the social economy.